The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is not a sequel. Let me explain. In 2017, when Breath of the Wild came out, it was considered a masterpiece, the greatest open world game of all time. No one could ever top this ever. It was nuts. Semicolon, however, comma, after playing Tears of the Kingdom, I realize now that that game is an antiquated, busted up, half-chewed tech demo because Tears of the Kingdom blows it out of the water like you would not believe. And there's four and a half reasons why. Nintendo, what the hell is wrong with you? You took something good and awesome that everyone liked and you just made it a million times better. How is that even possible? Possible. Bigger world, bigger enemies, bigger story. I don't call this a sequel because these feel like completely different games and I feel like that's nowhere more apparent than number one, the combat. While the core mechanics remain the same, Tears of the Kingdom tackles combat so much better than Breath of the Wild. Take for example this scenario that's very common in both games. I'm walking along, minding my own business, you know, not really thinking about much in particular, until suddenly I stumble across an enemy encampment. Normally I would just fight them, but I've got some pretty strong weapons right now and if I fought, I'd be breaking my good weapons for worse ones. What do I do? In Breath of the Wild, you ignore them. It's that or you throw a million bombs until they die, but even that's a waste of your goddamn time because the enemies almost never have anything useful, and when they do, you can't even tell because everything's in these stupid treasure chests that give you garbage half the time, and most of them are a pain in the ass to attack in creative ways anyways, and you just... But now, first of all, the enemies actually give me useful shit, and more importantly, I can see it. Shit! Look at that! That, I, that the thing they have! I, I need that! I need that! Don't you want to go over there and go get that? But God, my weapons are so good right now! What do I do? Wait a minute. My crappy weapons actually have a dope modifier on them. What if I just... Yeah. Yes, yes, this is actually kind of good now. And if I approach it in a different way and get more creative, then I can actually beat these guys without wasting my cool weapons. Or you know what? I can just skip fighting entirely and make a death machine. It's the best of both worlds. You have so many more options now and the options never feel like you're wasting anything. You get to save your good weapons from fighting bosses and you get your prize and it's more fun. It's so fucking cool. You're also less incentivized to pick up the exact same types of high damage weapons in the first place because of the new modifiers. In Breath of the Wild, higher damage equals better weapon, period. The modifiers don't even come close to changing how you think about or prioritize each weapon. It's just like, oh, okay, more damage. Cool, I guess. Or, oh, I get 10 extra hits out of this one. Or, oh, I can throw it farther. What the fuck? Let me show you guys how to use this one. The modifiers in Tears of the Kingdom change everything. They completely alter how you view the value of each weapon. It's not just damage anymore. That quick charge shit is insanely useful, but it's only found on soldier weapons. Extra durability is exactly what I need when making a rock hammer, but it only comes on low damage wooden weapons. The damage gap has also been significantly closed. A royal claymore is only slightly better than a knight or soldier's claymore. It's the modifier that matters. Again, this takes away the sting of breaking a good weapon, but it also means that even menial enemies feel like they're actually giving you a proper reward now. Skeletons were super annoying, but now... Dude, can you piss off? I'm busy. And it's gone. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, they're still annoying, but at least they give you good weapons now. The enemy's also forced to use different weapon types on them. It feels like I'm carrying around an arsenal again. Like I have a million different unique weapons that all might be useful at any time instead of just, you know... 20 Savage Llama Crushers. Hey, you guys want to know how to instantly tell if someone is boring or not? If they complain that the combat in this game is too simple or too similar to Breath of the Wild because the weapon types are the same. How do I know these people are boring? Because if they're complaining about it being a spam Y simulator, then that means that they're only using the melee weapons. They're just going in there and holding Y and complaining it's too simple. Of course you're not having fun. Meanwhile, over here, look at this shit I made. Look at this thing. Listen, I know you can argue that this is bad game design because they don't force you to use the most fun method of combat, but I say it's a good thing because they give you the freedom to choose between these combat styles, even if some players might choose the objectively less interesting version. The sage abilities in this game are also way more interesting. On paper, at least. The champion abilities in Breath of the Wild are generic as hell, but what's more useful? A cool ability that you can't even activate? Just fucking come here! Or a generic and boring one that you can actually use. I also wish there was more enemy variety. Bring back Dark Knights out, Numa, you fucking coward! But the enemies are way more complex now. They don't just stand around while you fight their friends anymore. They protect each other. They attack with each other. They still throw each other. It's it's cool, okay? The enemies as a whole are more interesting to fight now, especially these new ones that steal your fucking health from you. What? You actually have to be careful around these guys. A couple dumb hits and even the basic enemy types are a genuine threat. It gives an actual sense of danger and tension to traversing this underground area. I don't want to die, but I really want these materials. Which, by the way, number two materials. In Breath of the Wild, you end up with a horde of various fruits and monster parts that are literally only used for like one or two things. Even most of the food is useless once you unlock whatever armor set gives you the effect you're looking for. I know your dumbass didn't touch spicy peppers again after the great plateau, don't lie to me. Meanwhile, in Tears of the Kingdom, because of the weapon fusion, there's this completely new value to monster parts that just doesn't exist in Breath of the Wild, even with the armor upgrade system. Which, by the way, is still here, but way more fun to unlock. Not to mention ores, rocks, leaves, spears, and mushrooms? All essentially useless in Breath of the Wild, now permanent and valuable items in my inventory. Notice how in Breath of the Wild, they don't even care if your monster parts fall into a lake or hole. That shit will ruin your entire fucking week in Tears of the Kingdom. No! Fuck! No! Come back! 
Elixir's also got a buff, which actually makes them worthwhile to make. There's more combat dishes, and some of the materials, they can be used in cooking. They're just there to be useful and fun and cool, and I, and I love it! You can also attach materials to your arrows, and I wish for this feature to be neuralized from my brain. In old Zelda games, switching arrow types was a pain in the goddamn ass. Breath of the Wild made it quick, easy, and simple. Want to take out a flame arrow? Boom, there you go, just like that. Bomb arrow? Ancient arrow? It was so convenient and awesome. Meanwhile, Tears of the Kingdom. Ah! Sure, there are more arrow types than ever before, but it's pausing the entire fight, pausing everything for upwards of 10 seconds so I can scroll to a fucking acorn. Even worth it? Go fuck yourself, Shigeru Miyamoto. Just let me craft them in bulk ahead of time like I can with swords. Maybe like one monster horn gives you 10 arrows of that type because right now it's like, if I can get 40 hits out of attaching a lionel horn to an actual weapon, why would I ever? ever attach it to an arrow and only get one hit out of it. If you're gonna throw away your resources like that, you might as well just give them to me. Thank you, patrons. Okay, I have to catch up on so many of these. Just pretend this is like our sick Raid Shadow Legends ad read or something. Georgina Laws, Greg Roos, Ham Turtle, Hyperia Pontifix, Jack and Mikaz, Locky Man, Logan Shade, Maximus Beep, Mighty Fall, Peepin' Nutter, Rux Row, Soul Bucket, The Flower 27, The Social Streamers, Thick Maul, The Time Traveling Fair, and Unfunny Skeleton. Even if the arrows are dumb though, these materials give you an actual reward, not only for fighting, but also for exploring the world. Number three, the explo- The explo- the expert. Ah. The highest level of praise that I can give to this game is that the only reason I stopped playing to work on this script is because my controller died. Fuck. No. In a recent video, I compared Hogwarts Legacy to a church. All sights, but no substance. Well, if Hogwarts Legacy is a church, then this game is a fucking Dave and Buster's inside of a Six Flags, inside of a Coachella, inside of- You get the point. The very first thing that I did when I got off the starting area was decide that I need to make a direct, no layover, zero distraction beeline to the big fucking floating- cube island thing in the sky. Is it, is it a dungeon? I don't know. As it turns out, I was actually a complete and utter idiot because, hey, hey, stupid, look, look at this shit. I was just trying to get footage of me going to the cube and my dumbass forgot that I was recording and got distracted. Welcome to Tears of the Kingdom. Getting distracted is the entire point of the game. Any direction you pick will lead to something cool 100% of the time without exceptions. This notion was very apparent in Breath of the Wild, but it's been turned up to 11 with this game. There's like just so much shit. In Kakariko Village alone, there are at least five side quests, some of which require you to explore all the way across the map, two caves, a secret well, four shops, heaven and hell, and like 20 NPCs. It might seem like I'm spoiling too much, but keep in mind, I just showed you like this much, like, like this much of this. There is a genuine feeling of helplessness sometimes. When you can go and do an infinite amount of things, how could you possibly pick just one? There was an actual moment when I thought to myself, damn, I will never beat this game. Tears of the Kingdom isn't fun because you can attach a minecart to your shield and, and do sick Tony Hawk kickflips and gangers down a mountain. It's fun because once you hit that ollie and post to Reddit, you realize that you just stumbled across a hundred different things by complete accident. There's this one time when I was just walking west for no reason trying to get to one of these Sky Island things when I stumbled across this random cave entrance. No quest marker, no big ass sign or beeper telling me there's a cave here, shut up. If my ass took any other path except for this one, I would have missed it entirely. And inside this one random cave is a shrine, a bunch of extremely valuable materials, this frog dude whom I named Kaljit, he dies by the way, and an awesome new mini boss who dropped the craziest items I've ever seen in my life. It is impossible to explain this feeling to someone who hasn't played the game before. I was, I, I was just walking. What? And what's crazy is that I could do this all day. This never stops. Everything around you is there to make exploration easier, which is a direct response to some of the stuff you had to go through in Breath of the Wild. Don't get me wrong. I mean, exploring in that game was also extremely fun, but there are times when it feels like a chore. The whole game's founded on the idea of, see that mountain over there? Yeah, you can climb that. Wow! Assuming it's not raining, of course. And assuming you have like eight stamina upgrades. And assuming you brought enough, do you want me to climb the fucking mountain or not, man? If I hit that point where I'm like, whatever, I'll climb a stupid mountain later. In a game about climbing mountains, we fucked up somewhere. That sentiment is gone in Tears of the Kingdom. The towers don't just give you a tall vantage point, they shoot you into the goddamn stratosphere. You can teleport to the top of mountains now, attach Zonite devices to your shield, or screw it, you don't even have to climb. They removed all of the annoying stuff, and what we're left with is just... God, shut up, I hate this thing. Everyone loves to complain about the dumbass sword dowsing thing in Skyward Sword, but somebody, please enlighten me. How the fuck is a stupid beeping directional radar tracking thing any different? I don't need you anymore. Why? Because in Tears of the Kingdom, exploration is the only radar that you need. Joe, what the hell are you talking about? Okay, listen, exploring any area in this game will directly make exploring another one easier. Walk around the overworld and what do you see? Sky islands. Eventually exploring the surface helps you get up to and explore the sky. Shit! 
That was cool. Maybe I want to explore the overworld even more now. Maybe even find more of these towers. Well, guess where the undeniable best place for scouting the surface is? It's the fucking sky, stupid! Or maybe you're up here and you find a map of the underworld helping you explore, and also to find important locations easier. Which what? Which yield armor and, and, and abilities to help you better explore the other two areas in the game? And your map of the underworld will help you locate any shrines you might have missed without a stupid ear-piercing radar beep from hell? How about that? Exploration breeds exploration. Curiosity. Adventure. Reward. Korra Crucifix. Number four, the runes. Almost all of them are direct upgrades from the ones found in Breath of the Wild. Oh, you can move metal around to make bridges and catapults. Ah, that's so cute. Boom, now you can move anything and stick them together to make whatever the hell you want. I kind of wish the stuff I made didn't disappear in like four and a half seconds though. I got attached to those things, man. My Twitch chat kept insisting on giving all my vehicles Hispanic names. So everyone, I would like to introduce you to Pablo. Pablo also dies. Wait, wait. Pablo, no! Both Cryonis and Ascend are used for traversal. The difference is that one of them is actually useful outside of the starting area, and one of them is Cryonis. Tell me, in what scenarios would you ever, ever want to just be out over the water in this game? I can think of like uh, four, and there's usually something else for you to ride on anyways. Using Cryonis to climb is also a major pain in the ass, and they give you a million better ways to traverse waterfalls anyways. The shrines that they use it in are fun, but that and a couple of Koroks are the only use for what's supposed to be one of the four main abilities. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to direct your attention towards the map of Hyrule that you see below you. The red areas that I've colored in are the locations where you might use Cryonis. Now watch carefully, because I'm about to color in the locations where Ascend is useful. Boom, it's the whole fucking map. Not only does it make every case Cave easier to explore, but also most mountains will have these giant hovering pillar spikes in the wall, which help you climb up. I've seen people complain that it's a bit clunky, and they're not wrong, but don't try to tell me that this didn't happen to you a million times with Cryonis. Bombs got replaced by bomb flowers and rock hammers, and okay, yeah, you'll lose some of the movement tech and funny ragdolls, but I actually think that having bombs as a material is way more fun for the average player. Unless you're a speedrunner, bombs are extremely situational outside of the shrines. And like Cryonis, the core runes and abilities in the game should be things that you were utilizing from start to finish. Yours is a hundred million times more useful than bombs, are you kidding me? But that brings to the elephant in the room. What's Stasis's replacement? Okay, goddammit, I missed Stasis. Rewind, like bombs, is situational as hell outside of shrines. I like that you can cheese a lot of shrines with it, because I think that's funny, but Stasis did that too. God, it was so fun freezing shit and then right across the map with her, you could like freeze an enemy and whack it a bunch of times and it goes and it just goes like a million feet in the opposite direction, ragdolls and shit, I love that. Maybe if I could rewind enemies, it'd be better, I, I don't know. <clears throat> oh yeah, by the way, 4.5 was Pura. I am so goddamn excited to see where the series goes from here. I want to see them combine the freedom and exploration from this game with the dungeons and vastly superior linear storytelling from past games. I'm tired of looking at memories, okay? They're always out of order. I want to be in the story as it's happening, driving the plot. Basically put a link between worlds in the Switch and I'll get out of your hair, okay? Okay, bye.